Now let us talk about reptiles, the next class in the vertebrates that is class reptilia and over here also we are going to see many poisonous animals and uh, with this I am referring to the snakes. Snakes belong to class reptilia and uh, what are the characteristic features of the organisms which you find in reptiles? What you see over here is this is a crocodile, uh, this is a lizard, this is again a marine iguana young one and this is a turtle. So you can make it out that most of them are going to be terrestrial and a few if there they would be uh, aquatic but not completely aquatic they would come to surface for laying their eggs as was in the case of amphibians that they had to go to water for external fertilization though they were terrestrial some of them were terrestrial in fact most of them had a terrestrial lifestyle but they had to go to water but in the case of reptiles they are mostly terrestrial so even if they are going for hunting purpose into the water they are having aquatic means of living still they will have to come out for terrestrial survival for laying eggs as in the case of crocodile you must have seen that a crocodile often hunts in water but it has to come out of the water body in order to lay eggs and the example given over here are of class reptilia they have not shown snake over here and uh, you know snake is a poisonous creature it is, it is limbless it is not having limbs and there are poison fangs that is a total uh, different totally different study of snakes and most of the students are quite interested in knowing about snakes so we are not going to get into depth of the structure of these organisms but what we have to study is what are the cl classic characteristic features according to which if classified the organism would be standing in the class reptilia so first is herpetology is the study of reptiles this is a term that you have to remember Second is that they are ectotherms. Now this is a new term because till now we had been dealing with cold blooded organisms or we have been using a term poikilotherms. Another term for these organisms which cannot regulate their internal temperature is ectotherms. So these reptiles are ectotherm. They must get heat from environment. That is why you don't see reptiles. It is believed that snakes are not going to be found in the cold season. Those of uh, you people who stay in uh, northern sides of the country, they must be knowing that uh, it is the summer season that is having most of the reptiles coming out. Take the simplest example of a lizard. You would find the lizard that is wall lizard in your house in the summer season, but in when it is winter, that is peak winter, you are not going to find lizards because the reptiles, they are cold blooded and they go uh, to hibernate in the cold seasons in order to avoid that excessive loss of heat because they must get heat from the environment itself that is why even if the crocodile is going into water this is again from your general knowledge only you must have seen it somewhere on uh, popular media like some uh, TV show or a movie that it goes into the water, it stays over there, it hunts and then it comes out for basking out in sun because their body needs heat from the environment. That is why they are ectotherms. That means the thermal requirement would be taken from outside. And the skin is covered with scales otherwise known as scutes. They are egg laying. They are mostly egg laying and uh, we see that uh, Except for mammals and certain scorpions and a few fishes, most of the animals that we have studied till now, they lay eggs and reptiles are also one of those classes. These eggs are covered with shells but the shell that is present that is soft. Now the next class that we are going to study in that we will study that there is a calcareous shell of the egg and that is the case of birds. Birds are also sort of glorified reptiles only. They are mostly egg laying. They lay their eggs in the sand or soil or somewhere in natural crevices and the heat for hatching is taken from that place. They are tetrapods, need not to say. They have uh, limbs, two pairs of limbs if the limbs are present and in certain cases like uh, the snakes, you uh, see the example of python and rest of the snakes. You don't find limbs over there. This is the example given. This is a marine iguana, that is a type of lizard. This is a gharial, that is common Indian crocodile present in uh, Gangetic plains. This is a snake, that is sea uh, snake it is and this is a turtle. Okay, So we have examples of class reptilia. Let us see the characteristics that we have to remember. The first one is that... Uh, what does this word mean? This means crawling, okay? Crawling or creeping. So, 
we see that these organisms are always crawling and creeping that is why we have this name reptilia given to these and none of the organisms is able to walk properly because the limbs which are present they are very small in size they have not been totally uh, diversified or you can say advanced for a proper bipedal movement or uh, tetrapedal that is why they are crawling they are terrestrial mostly and their skin is cornified there are scales or scutes which are present on the epidermis there is no external ear opening present in the case of reptiles also we have tympanum as in the case of as in the case of amphibians we had we had tympanum that was a membrane that served the purpose of ear over here also we are not going to find an external opening of the ear only there would be a membrane known as tympanum just quite similar to those in the case of amphibians if the limbs are present there are, go there are going to be two pairs the heart is three chambered okay we had three chambered heart in the case of amphibians as well but there is one class of reptiles that is those which are crocodiles over here if i am saying crocodiles crocodiles refers to this gharial as well this uh, alligators that are present these crocodiles they have four chambered heart okay there is a false septum you can say which divides the ventricles into two parts when we have a three chambered heart we have one ventricle and two auricles that are present as was in the case of amphibians now in this case we have two ventricles but the ventricle separation is not complete as seen in the case of humans or mammals where we have complete separation of the heart into four chambers but over in the case of crocodiles what you find is that the heart is divided into four chambers by a false septum between the ventricles this point is to be remembered and uh, one point more this class crocodilia is somewhat uh, this sorry not class this uh, order this order is uh, typically different in one way that their eggs when they hatch it depends on the temperature at which they hatch what would be the sex of the organism all right if the temperature is high that is going to give rise to females and if the temperature is low you will have male crocodiles then the next point is that they are cold blooded we have discussed about it this yes they would be cold blooded there will be ectothermal uh, body mechanisms and the fertilization happens to be internal that means the gametes would fertilize inside the female body that would give rise to eggs and hence they are oviparous eggs which have external shells but soft shells and uh, this is all about class reptilia now let us see a few examples what are the examples in this case lizards turtles snakes as many examples as you can quote so let us take the first example of turtles only those which go into water so we have testudo what is testudo testudo is scientific name for a uh, tortoise okay then we have chelon that is the scientific name for a turtle then we have chameleon we all know what is that it is often used in certain languages that the person changes its color like a chameleon this is that uh, tree lizard which changes its color according to the ambient habitat and uh, that is known as camouflage then we have callots that is garden lizard green one then we have crocodilus i need not to tell you what it would be it would be a crocodile then we have alligator it would also be a crocodile like organism but with a curved snout and then we have hemidactylus hemidactylus is the wall lizard you can spot it anywhere then we have poisonous naja that is the cobra then we have bengaras that is again the poisonous crate slyly sitting in the crevices of certain places responsible for many deaths 
having poison fangs then we have vipera that is the viper so these are the poisonous species that we discussed bengaras vipera naja and rest of these that we talk about testudo is tortoise chelone is turtle chameleon callots crocodilus alligator and hemidactylus all the names that are being mentioned over here they are the scientific names along with the common names you have to remember them by heart it is better you see pictures google them and uh, see what each of these looks like properly you need not to get into the body structure of each just see if uh, you could figure out whatever characters we have talked about external characters morphological characters in the images that you look forward so this is all about class reptilia